$50,000, $60,000. Well, anyway, on with the game. Lee, who is our next guest? Hal, back for the second week on his climb to the $64,000 question is our police officer from Staten Island, New York, whose category is Shakespeare, Mr. Redmond O'Hanlon. How do you feel, Red? I feel pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I hope you feel a lot better. Gee, we've only known each other for a week, and I, I feel like we're old friends, don't you? Well, I feel like old friends, too. Oh, sure. Are you still carrying that gun you had with you last week? Oh, it's still here. It's a nice way to greet old friends. Nice. <laughs> I don't mind, darling. Let's get away because you're rich. I want to ask you something. How does it feel to have won $8,000? Well, let me put it this way, Hal. Uh, it's, it's just uh, terrific. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> That's a very impressive way of putting it. I imagine, I don't know to be sure, but I understand that $8,000 is probably close to two years' salary for an officer. That's, that's just that's Just those few minutes last week. You want two I years' I as much as uh, I would take two years. Of well, Red, I sincerely hope, and so does all of America, that you win two more years' salary tonight. <laughs> You've been home for a week thinking about it, talking about your friends. What kind of a week has it been? Well, it's been hectic. I imagine. I imagine it's been a little hectic. The uh, newspaper men were crawling through the windows and the doors, <laughs> and uh, telegrams were piling up, and uh, the mail was really terrific all over the country, especially from policemen. And if I may, I want to thank all these wonderful people over throughout the United States for sending the words of encouragement and good wishes. Oh, that's great. They're all rooting for you, right? They, they sure are. And the strange thing, Hal, I had some long-distance phone calls from uh, relatives in Canada. Well, what's so strange about that? Oh, I have no relatives in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> what, about your, what about your week at home? Was, was that pretty hectic, too, with the family around? Well, it was pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but knowing that I might come on the show tonight, I decided I'd better uh, bone up on Shakespeare. Yeah. Study, huh? So I put on a pretty heavy weekend. Uh, did you study, study all by yourself, or did you have any help? Or? No, my, my wife helped me. And I always say, without her help, I guess I couldn't have gotten this far. Well, uh, how did she help you? She kept the kids quiet. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> well, for the American public, Red, let's review your statistics. You have five children, you've been married 11 years, and you've been a New York City policeman for 10 years, right? That's right. Except for one year, I received a leave of absence to go out to Chicago to help Bishop Shield at the CYO uh, to fight uh, Cuban delinquency. You were there for a year? Yes. And uh, if I survive tonight <laughs> alive, I will devote some of my spare time to uh, the New York situation on delinquency. Oh, that's wonderful. Red, I... I uh... Red, I, I, hope, I hope you're with us for at least four weeks, which means 64,000. I really do. Now, let me, this, there's one thing that, that still, I'm still curious about. Last week, I mentioned the fact that, that a policeman choosing Shakespeare is a category. Now, I know that, I, I suppose a lot of people have the same assumption that I do, that you just don't associate policemen with Shakespeare. It's like an actor directing traffic, you know. Well, I, I don't understand that. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Hal, because the public uh, labors under the misconception here. Almost 10% of the New York City policemen uh, have uh, bachelor's degrees or greater, and many of them have two and three years of college. Well, that's uh, taught, uh, their degree. That's something that a lot of people didn't know. Well, it gives me a tip. If next time I'm stopped by a policeman for speeding, I'll show my report card. That's all I'll be right <laughs> in. Well, Red, now I'm going to ask you the question that you're here tonight to answer. You had a week to think it over. You've talked with your wife, your family, your relatives. You, uh, last year, last week, won $8,000. Tonight, you're here to tell us whether you're going to take it or leave it and try it for $16,000. Have you arrived at an answer? Yes, I have an answer. Red, what is your answer? Uh, I'll go ahead. You'll go ahead? <laughs> Standing before you, ladies and gentlemen, is the bravest policeman in New York. I'd like to ask you one more thing before we get into the question, Red. I hope this isn't making you nervous. Are you, are you comfortable? Can you answer one more question? Sure. Uh, 
Sure. What made you decide to go on for $16,000? Oh, it's, it's a nice question to answer. With the $8,000, you see, uh, speaking with, I have five children, and we're cramped for space. And we wanted a couple of more rooms in this house that I have now, but we didn't have the money to do it. So with eight, I couldn't do the real job. And if I fall back to four, I can still do uh, some of the work myself. But with 16, uh, that's it. That'll I do the whole complete, job? Complete the, the job. Well, I, I'd like to visit you and your family with your four or five new rooms in a little while. Are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Enough talk right into it? Right into it. Okay, Red. Now, if you remember last week, I asked you to step into the Revlon isolation booth. Tonight, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing because this is a terribly important question, and we don't want you to have any help, however impulsive from the audience, visually or audibly. We know you don't want any help. So now, would you let Miss Dollar escort you into the Revlon isolation booth again? Here we go. <laughs> Now, can you hear me? Are you comfy? Oh, fine, yes. Can you, can you see me and hear me? I can see you and hear you. Okay, don't be concerned about anyone else because I'm your key right here to $16,000. Okay. All right, may I have a $16,000 question, please? Thank you, Mr. Fyde. Red, I'm going to say this question, and then I'm going to repeat it, and you will have 30 seconds in which to think over the answer. Now, take all of, all of the 30 seconds. Give yourself every break. All right, here is the $16,000 question. The first collected edition of Shakespeare's plays is called The First Folio. Two of Shakespeare's fellow actors, John Henning and Henry Condell, gathered the plays together and acted as editors. The other men were the actual publishers and printers. Now for $16,000, Red, I want the full name of both printers plus the exact date of the printing. For $16,000, I want the full name of both printers of the first folio, plus the exact date of the printing. You have 30 seconds in which to think it over. Time is up. For $16,000, what is the answer to that question? There were two publishers, uh, Isaac uh, Jaggard is one, and uh, Ed uh, Blount. Blount is two. The publishers are right now. The date, Red. The, the date is uh, the year of 1623. You're right for $16,000! of show business, the only thing that can follow this is this building exploding. It's red eye. This is the most wonderful thing I've ever been a part of. How does it feel? Can you tell yet? Well, it's uh, just fantastic. I, I never thought I'd be here in the first place, and I know it speaks this point. I, I, frankly, I'm in the presence of two very wonderful people. One, a very, very humble, fine human being, a father of five children, and secondly, a person whom I never thought I'd meet, is a Shakespearean expert who made it pay off. Oh. It's just wonderful. Well, Red, now back to the rules. Are you okay? Would you like a glass of water or anything? Sure, what? Can we have a glass of water for Red, please? Can anybody get through with a glass of water? While, while, it's, while it's coming, I'll give you a rub down just to relax a little bit. It won't take any time. Well, Red, anyway, while they're bringing the water, let me tell you, you have $16,000 that you've won. As you know, your next question is worth $32,000. We don't want you to give your decision now. Again, we want to send you home for a week. Again, go through this miserable, hectic week of thinking it over, discussing it with your friends. And next week, next Tuesday night, we want you to come back and tell us whether you'll take the 16 or try for 32. If you decide to come back and tell us yes, 
And you know, we know that you'll be doing a little study during that time. Well, here's what we have for you. Thank you, Lynn. Here are three volumes. They are entitled Outlines of Shakespeare's Plays, Shakespearean Tragedy by A.C. Bradley, and the Encyclopedia Americana, Volume 24. Now, in these three books is the research material from which the $32,000 question will be compiled. You have a week to study these things, and we promise you that the answer will be somewhere in this book. Okay? Think it over for a week now, Red. We'll see you next week when you come back to tell us. Thanks a million, and congratulations on the 64th. <laughs> Lee, who is Revlon's next guest?